All right, so here's your video on how to uh, adjust caster and camber together. A little bit of an explanation and some theoretical understanding, and a little bit of tips and tricks. So this vehicle minus, you know, we're not even dealing with tow right now. I said caster camber. This vehicle minus the uh, difference in c between caster side to side looks decent, but the problem really is the difference from left to right side is excessive. 0.7 is excessive. We really can't be any more than a half, so 0.5. Um, the camber is pretty acceptable, but, you know, honestly, if we're going to adjust caster, I suggest that we try to get camber a little bit closer without making too much work. So I'm going to say let's try to bring that one degree a little bit more towards negative, maybe try to match it to that 0.8 or so. Um, not, without, not with going really crazy. I mean, this, this really is not bad. The difference is not bad side to side, it's technically in spec. So to, to explain camber, right Right now we're a little too positive, so it's a little pushed out on the top, um, or depending on how you look at it, that's a little pulled in on the bottom, right? So what we want to do to make it more negative is pull the top in, or AKA push the bottom out, either way, right, to stand that wheel up. That one's pretty easy to see. Caster's a little different. Um, Two is right on the money. 2.7 is getting close to add a spec, but the real issue is the difference. So we want to basically take that 2.7 and move it more towards two. This is too positive. We want it more towards negative. It's not negative, but it's less. So we want to move it more towards negative to get more towards the 1.2. So here's kind of what that looks like. Okay. Camber, you know, we, we would look like this. We got that down. Caster is basically the lower ball joint to the upper ball joint in an axis, so an angle. Caster like this is really positive. This would be zero caster, and this would be negative caster. And so if we are trying to go a little bit more, what are our numbers again? 2.7, we want to go a little bit more negative or a little bit more towards zero. We basically need to bring that bottom ball joint towards the rear. So remember, bottom ball joint towards the rear is going to decrease our caster angle. So a quick peek under here, we've got eccentrics on the lower control arm, we've got nothing on the upper control arm. Now I'm going to have my assistant take over, I'm going to talk about what that means. So first things first, just to give you a little explanation. Um, a lot of vehicles are set up like this, where the upper control arm is the adjustable control arm. So if we were trying to make adjustments to the upper, there's a couple critical things. One, if we were to move both of eccentrics, or in this case it's actually shims, outward, that would stand our wheel up and that would be like zero camber, right? So on this particular one, I'll tell you, we got one degree of camber. But what we really want is like a little bit less than one degree. We, one positive degree means that that wheel is almost tipped out at the top. So what we want on this one is to pull the top in. But that car has lower control arm eccentrics. So what I'm saying here is more to make sure you understand it. It's also got excessively positive caster. What that would mean if it was an upper adjustment, it'd be kind of like way back here, right? So I just moved this. It's a little bit hard to see, but if you look at that lower ball joint stayed still, if the upper ball joint was towards the rear, this would be kind of raked out like a chopper. That's really positive caster. We want to move it more towards negative or more towards zero. We would actually be able to put in a little bit more shims towards the rear and a little bit less shims towards the front and you see how it moved that ball joint a little forward. That's the type of thing we want to do. But this one's all in the lower control arm. So same concept, but the lower control arm. So check this out. We got this lower control arm right here. We got this upper control arm that's just a follower. It's just kind of hanging out. So we don't play around with the upper control arm on most Toyota trucks, at least the newer ones, Tacoma Tundra. So if you're picturing this, and we're talking about lowering, if we're talking about moving the lower control arm, if I wanted to make more positive caster, I could move it like this, right? And now it's raked out like a chopper. If I wanted more negative, I would move it back. And that would be 
less like a chopper, more like a shopping cart, kind of dragging the wheel behind it. And then if I want to talk about caster, or if I want to talk about camber, if I wanted to make hella flush negative camber, i push the control arm out. And now it would be like, you know, a lot of camber tipped in, you know? Or if I wanted to make less, you know, go more towards positive, I would pull it in. Kind of, can you visualize that? So from the side, here's camber, making it hella flush, making it like bro style lifted, we're making it perfect. So considering those, let's take this out of the equation. What we've got on our vehicle, I'm just looking at our numbers, we have got too much uh, positive camber. So the top of our wheels tipped out. How could we make it uh, less positive? We could push this control arm outward, and that'll stand it up, right? And that's going to bring it a little bit more negative, okay? So that's the first key. We want to move the control arm out. But that's not going to deal with our, our caster issue. And, you know, honestly, the camber's decent. We mostly want to deal with the caster. And the caster right now, we got a 2.7, and we want it more towards a 2.0. That means... I need to basically move this control arm a little bit back. I need to move the ball joint back. Because right now it's too far raked out, so I need to move it back to stand it upright. So what I'm kind of saying is I need to move it back, but I also kind of need to move it out a little bit, right? If you look at this control arm, one eccentric can do both of those. I could take the front eccentric and I could push the front eccentric forward. That would move it back, and that would also push it out. So that would level out my caster more towards zero, but also kind of help stand my tire up to be a little bit better camber. Make sense? So it's kind of weird to think, right? But if you understand what I'm saying, you understand what I'm saying. I could also, to fix my, my caster, I could pull this rear one in, right? Watch the ball joint. That would move it to the rear, but it would also pull the bottom of my tire in more, and that would make it even more positive camber. So that would kind of be like, that's the wrong direction to go. So how about we leave the rear one alone? We just go ahead and we, uh, you know, we just deal with the front one. And so again, this needs to go rear. Let's push it out, right? Let's push it out. It's going to fix both problems. So here we go. I'm going to hand off my light. And do that adjustment. Now, look at those numbers, and remember, caster is not live. So we're going to do a caster adjustment. You're going to think it's good. We don't really know. We're going to have to re-sweep it. So check this out right here. Here's our eccentric. So our eccentric right now, this bolt is basically what we're trying to move. We need to move this bolt outward. We agreed on that. This bolt outward. How do we do that? Well, I need to loosen the bolt. Okay, I'm loosening the bolt. When I get the bolt loose, I'm going to use a wrench. To move that bolt outward, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to turn it this way. I'm going to say we probably need to move it out quite a bit. So see what I'm doing? You see how that bolt is rotating outward as I turn this eccentric? You agree that bolt's going outward, right? I'm going to say, I don't know, about that much. I'm, I'm eyeing it up. I'm making a guesstimate. So if I move it out about that much, I moved it about 90 degrees right there. You know, I could count the number of lines, but I don't know exactly how many lines to move it. I'm kind of doing it by eye, conceptual learning here. I'm going to snug it up. Let's look at our numbers. It doesn't seem to think our caster changed, but I'm not convinced. So what I'm going to do, I need to hit resweep caster. And verify caster. We had to have somebody jump up in there, steer the wheel with the brake pedal depressed. It can't measure the steering axis just looking at it. It has to actually turn the wheel to see to calculate the steering axis. So you can't Caster is not live. You have to re-sweep it after any adjustment. 
And then here are new numbers. Once he shuts the door, it'll see. So we're close, but I'm still not thrilled with the caster, and we really need to get it um, a little bit close to the 1.8. So it's uh, it's not enough positive caster, meaning it's too much like this. So I need to rake it out a little. So what that means, I need to move the ball joint a little forward. So what that means is to move the ball joint a little forward. I'm looking at this, right? I'm loosen this up. To move the ball joint a little bit more forward, I need to pull this in. To pull this in, I'm going to turn like this. So you can see, as I did that, it it kind of pushed off of here and it moved that uh, bolt in. As it moved that bolt in, it walks that um, ball joint forward. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say snug it up right here. And again, I can reference the camera live, but the caster's got to be re-swept right here. So, I'm liking my camera numbers pretty well. I'm not sure about caster. We don't know. Verify the caster. While he's doing that, I'm going to give it a little jounce. So I'm hoping that this is our final adjustment. Sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. Show the bar graphs. And, you know, I'm happy with that. So, again, we got about a 0.2 camber, a 0.3 cross caster. If you really wanted, you could get it closer than this, but um, this is not going to pull. This is not going to have excessive tire wear. And when I just fixed the caster, I didn't blow out the camber by doing it the wrong direction. And so, hopefully, this helps you understand at least the concept of how to do this job. It still takes practice. You can still use the machine functions by um, saying adjust caster and camber with eccentric cams. But I personally find, um, I personally find it just a little bit easier to do it like this, um, or at least it helps you understand it better rather than just be a robot listening to the machine.